Okay, uh, this is supposed to be fun? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I was born uh, August 31, 1936 in Grand Forks, North Dakota. My parents, Melvin and Signe Wager, had four children, and I was the second oldest, and my brother Jim, and then myself, and brother Bob, and sister Joanne. And uh, I'll tell you, my folks, uh, at that particular time, we lived, and we talked about this, that we, we lived in a little black shack on the wrong side of the track in Inkster, North Dakota, population of just a few hundred people. And it was truly, a, a, it was a tar paper shack. And I could remember the winters of the, we had air conditioning because the wind was right blowing right through the, <laughs> the crevices in, in the house. So that was quite a memory there. And I, I guess that's uh, probably one memory I have from North Dakota. Uh, we moved uh, from Inkster, North Dakota to uh, Oakwim, Washington, when I was about five or six years old. And uh, in Hoquim, uh, my father, uh, of course, he continued his barber in business, and uh, which he, uh, he spent 40 years uh, plus in, uh, in, in, in barber, in the barbering business. And he would uh, ask uh, Bob, he didn't ask us, he told us, to uh, go down to his barber shop on the weekends and, and clean the shop. And that was my brother Bob and I and uh, Bob was a year and a half younger, but we'd get into fights and because we didn't like being there. And so this one particular time, I, I head-butted him, knocked his tooth forward, and I said, oh, that stopped the fight. And I said, okay, let's push the tooth back. As far as I know, he never lost the tooth, but uh, <laughs> it did stop the fight. And uh, that was, uh, one of, the, one of the memories there with my father. Another memory is that uh, uh, we, would, uh, we would try to sneak in after midnight at, 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 into our bedroom. And the windows, of course, they were wood frame windows and they'd squeak. So we'd quietly open up, the, well, it wasn't quiet. We'd open up the window and sure enough, dad would be standing just inside the window <laughs> waiting for us. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll always remember that. And my, my mother, uh, she worked in a, a paper mill actually in Hoquiam. And uh, later on in life, she actually worked in housekeeping at, at the hospital. She was uh, very social. And uh, one thing, one of my memories in her early, early childhood was that she, uh, she forced me <laughs> to eat vegetables. I didn't like eating vegetables. She actually stood over with a wooden spoon. She never hit me. But uh, somewhere I still have that wooden spoon. I always threatened to frame it. I thought, <laughs> I thought, that, I thought that would be kind of interesting. So in Hoquim, uh, I was always very, a very shy person. And uh, it's, uh, it's, kids kind of wondered, how, how was I ever born if you were that scared of girls? <laughs> and I... Uh, but I did, I, I did, uh, somehow I became president of the Boys Council in high school. And uh, then I uh, also got involved with the Sea Scout group. We had a 39 foot uh, retired uh, Coast Guard boat. boat and uh, I remember one trip we took up at the Canadian at San, San Juan's. And I forget how many young boys there were, but after six days, uh, well, we were getting kind of smelly with no, no showers and, and all that sort of thing, but it was a great experience and uh, one that uh, I always remember. So I, I, did, I did play the violin, uh, actually in junior high, high school and even in college for a couple of years. Uh, nothing really ever came of that, but uh, I did play in the uh, orchestra in high school and, the, uh, and in college and in the Grace Arbor Symphony for a couple of years. Yeah, that was kind of fun. I graduated from high school in 1954 and uh, went on to college at Washington State College at that time, which it became a university the year I graduated in 1960. So I upped the ante on, uh, I always figured that, well, a university is a higher level than a college. But uh, I spent uh, my first two years 
not knowing why I was there, I was taking business, general business, and uh, some music courses, and I learned how to play play pool and drink beer. I went back my third year. Somebody told me you better figure out what you're doing here. So I kind of flipped a coin and said, "Well, okay, let's let's do civil engineering." So I spent the next three and a half years in civil engineering. Graduated in, in 1960. And uh, while I was in college, I got involved with the ROTC, the uh, Reserve Officer Training Course. And uh, I, from there, I actually, uh, uh, when, I, when I moved to Seattle, I took a job with the City of Seattle in 1960 after graduation. And I joined the Air National Guard and uh, served six, six years uh, with, the, with the Guard. The, uh, it was a good, a good uh, seven years with the city of Seattle and I gained experience in all phases of construction as a city inspector inspecting uh, asphalt paving, concrete paving, uh, sanitary sewer, uh, water lines, sea walls, bridge construction, uh, on and on. So I gained great experience which helped me later as I moved into, uh, into, into other positions. I, uh, right after college, I uh, ended up getting married, actually, to my uh, my sister's best friend, because I was so shy and uh, didn't really wasn't brave enough to talk to too many girls. <laughs> so we uh, we married and moved to Seattle, and uh, I took that job with the city engineering, and I left. Uh, I wanted to move on and uh, into uh, another position, so I, got, I, re I received my uh, civil engineering degree uh, in the state of Washington. And then uh, that, uh, armed with that degree, then I, I launched out into uh, another position, and I went to work for the Peter Kewitt Sons Construction Company. And uh, I stayed with Peter Kewitt Sons for only only two years, and then my position became available uh, for as a county engineer in Lewis County. So I uh, applied and I, I did, uh, I got the position in 1969. And I moved in my office, uh, <clears throat> in my county engineering office, and I thought, I don't know anything about county engineering, don't know anything about counties, and here I am the county engineer, what do I do? <laughs> well, it didn't take long, it started coming at me pretty fast. So uh, I ended up uh, spending 17 years uh, with Lewis County and uh, while I was in Lewis County I uh, joined the Toastmasters Club hoping to overcome my fear of public speaking and it helped. Uh, it uh, never became a great speaker but hey I can somehow get by. And I became president of the uh, uh, Toastmasters uh, group in Jehalis uh, and I also became president of the Kiwanis Club in Chehalis. And so I was starting to uh, branch out a little bit. And I ended up getting divorced. Uh, took the job in 1969 with, uh, with Lewis County and I got getting divorced in 1972. And uh, the, uh, 1973, in October, well in 73, I, I got married went to my second wife, the love of my life, Jane, and uh, come to find out that, well, we, we met on the dance floor, and uh, come to find out that we had uh, something in common. We both had four children. <laughs> Let's bring Jane in. I don't get one. Actually, you're better at this than I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm supposed to do. Okay, uh, at any rate, uh, still in Lewis County in 1972, and I, I ended up getting divorced. And uh, in 1973, well, I met this gorgeous, lovely <laughs> lady, and we met it on a dance floor. And I says, wow. She is gorgeous. High boots, short summer, summer shorts, oh, high hairdo, come on now. brunette. <laughs> and I said, I think I'm in love. 
And so we found out that we had quite a bit in, in common, one being that we each had four children. And Jane, our, your four children? My four children were from age 16 down to, let's see, about six. Okay, it's Steve Chamberlain, our, my oldest, and then Vicki Chamberlain. Now their, her name is, of course, changed by this time. And uh, Randy Chamberlain, and then Lana Christensen were my four. And Lana was about seven, six or seven. I've lost track. And uh, Steve was about 16. Well, my first impression was Handsome, that... Handsome, gorgeous. Yeah, he was very nice looking, a very nice gentleman. And uh, I thought he was just uh, out on the town, uh, just... Um, soothing his broken heart from getting a divorce and so I really didn't expect to hear from him again. I, Actually I did ask her for her phone number she wouldn't give it to me and she says it's in the phone book. Well I spent the next week searching through the phone book and it turned out I had an old phone book so I couldn't find her. Well I finally did find an updated phone book and I found her phone number and I asked her for a date, and she uh, says, well, you can meet me down at this parking lot downtown. <laughs> I says, oh, okay. <laughs> I just didn't want just anybody coming to my house. I had four children there, so I just said, I'll meet you. So this was just kind of a let's have coffee type thing. So, so that, that was our first date, and uh, uh, well, I brought four children into the into the picture, with my oldest being Mike, and then Mark, and then Diana, and Scott, and uh, we became Eight is Enough. And Eight is Enough was a, was a program that ran for several years in the 70s, and uh, that was the name of the program, was Eight is Enough. And they actually had a theme song that says, there was this woman that had four children, who met this man who had <coughs> who had four children, and they became eight is enough. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch, right on. And our children actually, uh, in the early years, there they put together a photo album with the theme song and the photos and so forth. And uh, I was looking for that today. That's we have it somewhere. Well, when we first met, he lived in this nice apartment with a swimming pool and he uh, liked to cook steak and, um, and coke, and that's what he fed his children. I didn't cook the coke. <laughs> and my kids thought it was wonderful. You know, we get to go swimming, we have steak, and we get coke. Don't forget, and the, don't forget the buttered noodles. Oh, the buttered noodles, yeah. Because at home they didn't eat like that. So anyway, they, they thought it was great, so. Uh, the kids all got along together, and so we ended up uh, getting married. And so then we found a big house, enough to fit all of us, and uh, we begin our life. It was pretty fast-paced, and uh, I, I cooked a lot, and our menus changed to definitely from steak to casseroles, potatoes and gravy, and that type a meal, of which I was more used to cooking, and uh, I know I bought a lot of milk and bread. My my father used to say, "Well, go to the used bread store," and <laughs> which there was one that second day bread anyway. And then I I would buy milk at this local store close by. Four gallons at a time. Four or five gallons at a time, and they asked me if I was running a daycare. And I said, well, sort of. <laughs> anyway, we had four, four boys or five boys that were, you know, sports-minded and big guys, and they would come and drink that milk and bring their friends. And uh, a few times I caught them taking milk right out of the jug, you know, drinking it, of which they got in trouble. Anyway, it was it was interesting. We had a long table that we 
And we started out wanting them all to sit together for the meal at the same time. And that went on for quite a while and until as they, they got older and they had sports things and one or two of them would drift off. Well, we added uh, we had a pretty good sized table in the kitchen, and we added a, a, another table to the end of it, so we could sit all seat all eight of us to ten uh, of us all ten of us <laughs> to, yeah. to have our meal together, and uh, that worked well. Uh, something that you you don't see today with with families, I, I don't believe. Yeah. So we did uh, find this uh, 4,600 square foot house, and. It, did have a pool table in a basement uh, in what we called the bedroom for three of the boys. And uh, if they complained, we said, hey, how many kids have a pool table in your bedroom? Mm -hmm. And our oldest daughter had her own, own bedroom. And uh, then the two younger daughters, Diana and Flana, they had to share a bedroom. And like most girls, they probably argued a lot, did their thing, but it worked out very well. They all got along pretty good together. When it was necessary, they stood up for them, each other. And so, well, we at Christmas time. It was quite a quite a show. But we bought gifts for everybody. And there's one particular uh, Christmas we felt well, these these poor kids they haven't had much. So we bought water beds. It was for the four younger ones. For the four younger ones, yes. And uh, I'm surprised the the upper floor didn't crash into the basement with all that weight. But uh, I remember with uh, with Vicky, she wouldn't make her bed, so I'd go in there and pull her bedding off the, onto the floor. And uh, well, one day she pulled all the bedding off our <laughs> off our bed, so I stopped I stopped doing that. As they grew up and and moved out tried to get a king-size water bed into apartments is a little tough. So then we had a tough time getting rid of them. So, but anyway, that's one of the stories. Well, I, I did, uh, I worked for Lewis County for 17 years and then uh, applied for a job in Pierce County and worked there for two years as a, uh, as a deputy director. And uh, that was a good experience. And I moved on to working for the County Road Administration Board in Olympia, which is, uh, an agency that uh, uh, was kind of a consulting uh, group for all 39 counties, and I became the crab director, or the big, the, the, the king crab, king crab, or the old crab, whatever they want to call me. All in all, I, I really had a, a rewarding uh, uh, career, and uh, as, as I've said, now I've been retired for 23 years, and uh, I said uh, retirement's the best job I ever had. By the time I retired in 1960, uh, and then I, uh, I got involved with uh, Jane at the real estate office, and so I ended up having an engineering license, a uh, real estate license, an insurance license, a uh, two, se two, two security license. You said 1960. You didn't do all that in 1960. 1995, okay. okay. <laughs> After retirement in 1995, yes, I had all of these uh, uh, licenses from the state of Washington. He went to my office or where I worked, but he didn't like the office or he didn't want to pursue real estate, so he moved on. So that was short-lived. Uh, I was into uh, financial services for a, a short time, and then I actually spent a little time, uh, more than a little time, uh, working uh, and part-time with the uh, storage facility. I, I, I traveled a lot during my uh, career years, uh, especially when involved with the Association of Counties uh, National. And Jane went along uh, on quite a few of those trips and uh, went, probably visited probably half a dozen uh, states uh, visiting uh, state associations when I was president. And one of the trips that uh, was very memorable and very unique is uh, when uh, the association had a meeting on Mackinac Island in uh, Huron, uh, Lake Huron, and uh, Lake uh, Huron. Yes, Huron, Lake Huron, Lake Huron, and Michigan. Excuse me. In Michigan, yeah, Lake Huron in Michigan. And what's so unique about this island is that they banned all motor vehicles in 1898. So we arrived on a, an airboat and um, 
was transported by a horse and carriage to the famous Grand Hotel up the hill. And uh, that was a great experience. And uh, unfortunately, Jane was not along on that trip, so I, I hope that uh, we'll be able to do that uh, in the not too far future. On some of the trips that I went on, by the time I got eight kids settled in with somebody else watching them and getting all their activities taken care of, <laughs> I was sick by the time I left. So I ended up at doctor's offices and a couple different times and having to stay in the room for the rest of the visit because... That happened a couple of times. Not every time. Yeah. <laughs> so. I can't remember all those memorable trips, so <laughs> some of them were <laughs> watch, sitting in the hotel room. <laughs> so. I would like to say that uh, we have been very blessed uh, having each other uh, for 44 years <laughs> in county. And, uh, coming up. Very, uh, very blessed in having such a large family with uh, eight children, 19 grandchildren, and 11 great grandchildren and counting. I'd like to kind of wrap this up by reading something that I wrote uh, in October of uh, 2015. I entitled it, What Really Matters in Life. Within one year, Jane and I will both be 80 years of age. Over the past few weeks, I've given a lot of thought as to what is important in life. Reflecting on various seasons of our lives, our childhood years, our teenage years, our educational years, our marriage years, our raising family years, our career years, our retirement years, we have had challenging times and many more rewarding times. Summing it all up, there are really only two things that matter in life. First is having a relationship with God, knowing that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Second is family. Everything else in life is there to challenge us and to support us as individuals and as family. Yes, we do need food, shelter, and clothing to take us along our journey through life. If, it happened to, if we happen to achieve some level of wealth due to our God-given talents and abilities, that is wonderful as long as our spiritual walk with God and our family are not, satisfied, are not sacrificed in the process. And like they like to say, life is good. I guess with having a large family, I would just like to say that uh, when we're no longer here, that our children all keep in contact with each other and stand up for each other and, and still be a family so that they don't go their own separate ways. They always remember that we put two families together and we expect them to stay together. Well, I, I didn't mention that we do have longevity in our family. Uh, my grandmother lived to 104, and her daughter lived to 105. And my father lived to 92, and my mother was 88. And Jane has longevity on her side. Not that long, but I think my father died at 86, and my mom at 91. So, so I tell people, you're going to have to put up with us for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it or not. <laughs>